Hello fellow computer enthusiasts, my name is Christian, hope you're doing well today. In today's episode of ILTP WC, we will build a power efficient home server slash NAS to replace some functionality of my already existing sweat vapor based Unraid server that you might know from my other video, which you can watch here. Okay, follow me into my game room slash home lab slash man cave slash the place where I do all the work and all the video editing and so on. And let's have a look on the components that I want to use for this build. Before we deep dive into today's topic, I want to tell you that nothing in this video is sponsored at all. I bought everything with my own money and all the opinion and experience shared are mine and unbiased. I mean come on, I'm very new to YouTube and there's no sponsor, only the awesome people like you watching, liking and sharing my videos. So thanks a lot and let's start with our power efficient home server and NAS build on a budget. What you see here is one of my current home servers that I use for video editing as a network attached storage and it is acting as a multimedia hub for my family and friends, serving movies, TV shows and images via plaques and other cool self-hosted services. You can find a detailed overview of this specific server on my channel, link can also be found in the video description. The machine has 28 gigs of DDR4 non-error correcting memory and a beefy sweat ripper with 24 threads serving all my virtual machines and services. Which is in general great, but it also has an idle power consumption with its 114 terabytes of parity protected storage and the 6 NVMe cache pool of 200 watts per hour and peaks while working of up to 600 watts. And that is a wrap. Because every year when we get the energy bill for the last year, my wife asks the same question. Why the heck is your game room slash office slash home lab consuming two thirds of our whole household energy? And I always told her, honey, that's because I run Plex and all the other wonderful services for our family. But she's right, that's not okay. Especially not because the server is idling when I'm not working on videos and the family is not watching movies, reading comics or listen to music. Therefore, I need to change something. We have to create a more power efficient server that satisfies my family's media consumption needs without consuming energy like a big Bitcoin mining farm. And I thought so, maybe I'm not the only person that needs a power efficient home server besides the low energy Raspberry Pis, that's why I decided to make it a topic for ILTP WC and show you guys how to build a power efficient home server within a reasonable budget by utilizing last generation's gaming hardware because that's currently becoming very cheap and is available in the market. If you don't care about your electricity bill at all or you live in a country where electricity is cheap as hell, you might want to watch the video just for the education and the entertainment part. As mentioned, my family and I use a new server mainly to watch movies and TV shows and plaques, to read comics and view our family pictures with our friends on TV. The server will also host a WikiJazz instance and TubeSync that makes YouTube videos available in our home network. And we need that to have our 90s like TV channels in plaques that we create our own. Another role that this server has to play is as a local backup target for important data from our main NAS. That is also be synced to the cloud. We need that because a local backup is easier and faster to restore. Another use case that I have in mind to pass through the APU into a Steam headless Docker container to be able to remote play video games and emulator games to my Steam Deck and our household tablets. That's something that we already do with the bigger machine, which has a dedicated AMD GPU, but might especially for emulation titles also work with the integrated GPU from the processor. I will cover the whole software stack, the operation system, which might be TrueNAS, Unraid, Proxmox or a Debian Linux, and the remote play emulator scenario in one of my upcoming videos, where I explain the software side of things for this server. So if you want to see that, make sure to like and subscribe and hit the bell notification item. 
When it comes to power efficiency and value for money, nothing can beat my already existing Raspberry Pis, because they are fast, reliable and consume just a few watts while idling, and to be honest, that is what they do most of the time, even in my setup, where they all together run more than 40 Docker containers and services. But they are not fast when it comes to file transfer speed and they are very limited when it comes to I.O. ports to connect external SSDs or hard drives. And my use case, as you know, also includes that the server needs to offer NAS functionality as well as remote playing games with emulators up to at least PlayStation 3. Therefore, we have to go with an x86 CPU from AMD or Intel. So let's have a quick comparison of last gen's gaming CPUs that serve our use case and that are available within our budget. Please keep in mind that my use case needs an integrated APU because I don't want to spend the PCIe slot for a dedicated GPU because I plan to put the whole NAS into a Fractal Node 304 which is a mini ITX case. And yes, that's only because they fit nice into my IKEA shelf where I already have two of these cases. One of this is packed with my Raspberry Pi Super 6C cluster board and the two additional Raspberry Pis working in my household. You can find them in the other video. Bef Before we compare the processors, let's clarify what features we have to compare. I mean, obviously the power consumption is a topic, as well as hardware-based media encoding for the next generation codecs like AV1, and also the current gen codecs like H265, also known as HEVC, and the classic 264, which is slightly older, but probably the most widely used codec these days, also known as AVC because I want to use the system as my main multimedia station, which means that we have to store all the TV series and movies and comics on it that we watch multiple times because my wife and I have some sort of a schedule of TV shows that we usually watch over the course of a year and which doesn't really change a lot, to be honest. That's why only those files will be moved from the bigger home server NAS to the new power efficient home server. All the other movies and TV shows will remain there and can be watched via Plex after explicitly turning on this server. That means that I don't have to pack another 100 terabyte into the new NAS in order to work, but I can still save a lot of energy not having the Threadripper based system idling the whole day. We will also compare the core count and I want to have multi-threading on the CPU because usually I tend to have new ideas and my hardware needs to be versatile enough to keep up with my future wishes and requirements. I think we can ignore overclocking capabilities because I want the system to be quiet, power efficient and most importantly very stable. High frequency clock speeds on single core might also be important because emulation usually is very CPU intense. The last factor that we need to keep into account and that might differ from country to country is availability of the hardware in new or in good use conditions because I want to have a home server reasonably priced. Let's have a quick look on the different CPUs that are in the budget and enabling my use case. There are the Ryzen 5 from different generations that offer integrated GPU or better the gold standard for integration GPUs. Namely that the 5600G, the older 4600G and the oldest the 3400G processors. The 5 and the 4000 series CPUs are 6 cores with 3.9 GHz and 3.7 GHz clock speed compared to the cheaper 3400G which is a 4 core processor with 3.7 GHz but this is only only Zen 2 architecture, not Zen 3 as the other ones. On the other side of the arena, we have the Intel Core i5s, 10400 and 11400, which are also both 600 core processors with Intel's integrated UHD graphics model, 630 and 730. Both can also be used for emulation use cases that I have in mind. A cheaper option on Team Blue would be an Intel Core i3-12100, which is a 4 core processor with a higher clock speed and an integrated Intel UHD Graphics 730. After watching a lot of YouTube videos where people play tested the different integrated GPUs on emulators such as Dolphin and RPC S3 and comparing a lot of benchmark tables of different sources, I decided to go with the AMD Ryzen 5600G, which was also available on sale in my area for just about 110 US dollars, which is uh, pretty amazing. The power consumption idling seems to be around 20 watts, which is shockingly good compared to the 200 watt power consumption of my Threadripper based NAS system that I currently own and that costs a lot while idling and doing nothing. <music> 
After choosing the processor, or better the APU for the new power efficient home server, it is time to find a motherboard that fits into my Fractal Note 304 case, which unfortunately only supports mini ITX form factor boards. But that is not really a downside on a home server NAS, as I plan to build it, because usually they also offer M.2 slots for cache SSDs, and due to the integrated GPU that comes packed with our chosen processor, we can live with just one PCIe slot, maybe for a 10 gig NIC or a SATA controller, in case we want to extend the supported disks of our motherboards. I also learned recently that the power consumption of the motherboard itself differs a lot, and that makes totally sense when you think about the different peripherals shipped with the board. Take for example the motherboard of my Threadripper based Unraid server. It comes with two Intel NIC controllers and an integrated Intel wireless card, and additional has great 7 to 1 channel high definition audio. All that features usually consume a lot of energy and therefore add to the idle power consumption of your build. Disabling features in BIOS sometimes decrease the power consumption, but you can't really bet on that. The motherboard that I will use for the build is equipped with a B450 chipset and adds another 7 watts idle power which is, which is pretty reasonable compared to a more powerful chipset or a board with more features. At this point in time, you can get a lot of last generation's gaming gear on eBay and other platforms if you want to buy them used, or you can acquire some of these boards very cheap as augment or remaining stock. Good luck finding the hardware you're looking for. As all components, also storage is closely related to your use case. If you just want to watch movies and TV series with your home server slash NAS, spinning hard drives are your gold standard with respect to cost per terabyte. They are reliable and offer for that kind of usage enough speed and performance. But if you plan to run a bunch of different containers and services, you might want to consider SATA based SSD storage or even better NVMe based SSD storage, like I use it on my Threadripper based Unraid server. If you want to edit videos via network on your home server, NVMe storage is a must, paired with a 10 gig network interface, especially if you plan to go 4K with your video files. That is the reason why I'm currently only doing 1080p YouTube videos, because the file size are significantly smaller than 4K, and I only use gigabit network at home, for cost reasons, obviously. For this build, I go with a 2TB Intel NVMe SSD, which will act as a cache pool for my hard drives and to store all my containers and virtual machines, because SSDs have a much higher random read-write IOPS than traditional spinning hard drives. To store all the movies and TV series, comics and games that should be available on the new NAS, I will go with the 18TB Seagate Exo drives, which I already use in my bigger NAS. They offer great performance and come relatively cheap with around 16 bucks per terabyte. In addition to that, I plan to add two older 8TB Western Digital chucked hard drives that I already own from previous builds. That is one of the pluses when you are using an operation system like Unraid or utilizing a feature called SnapRate that you can exchange smaller hard drives for bigger ones when these become available for cheap. And you don't have to replace all the disks at once, you can do it in an incremental fashion. Thanks a lot for watching this episode of ILTP WC. The next step is to install an operation system for this server. This might be Unraid or Proxmox, maybe some Ubuntu server that I configure my own, or maybe we can also utilize um, something like TrueNAS, but we will see. Um, currently my feeling is that I will go with Unraid because I have different sized disks. Okay, in the next video I will show you the whole software stack and all the services and also how I back up all the data from my bigger NAS into the new power efficient NAS. Thanks a lot for watching this episode. Please make sure to like and subscribe if you want to support this channel because it really means a lot to have um, you as a subscriber. And I hope I see you in the next video.